All right. The Kosovo Specialist Chambers is now in session. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome everyone uh, in and outside the courtroom. Madam Court Officer, can you please call the case? Good afternoon, Your Honours. This is case KSC BC 2020-06, the Specialist Prosecutor versus Hashim Tachi, Kadri Vaseli, Recep Salimi and Jakub Krasnici. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. Now I would, uh, I would kindly ask the parties and participants to introduce themselves, starting with the Prosecutor's Office. Thank you, Your Honor, and good afternoon uh, to everyone in and outside the courtroom. Alan Teeger and Lise van Velde on behalf of the Specialist Prosecutor's Office. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Now I turn to the defense. Uh, online, I see Mr. Young, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, David Young appearing for Mr. Recep Salimi, assisted today by co-counsel Mr. Roberts and Dr. Yassini. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. And now I turn to the Council for Victim, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, everyone. Maria Radziejowska representing victims in this case. Thank you, Ms. Radziejowska. Uh, and for the record, I note that Mr. Uh, Selimi is not present in the courtroom, but attends this hearing via VTC. And finally, for the registry, Mr. Nielsen, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, colleagues. Jonas Nilsson, Judicial Services Division. Thank you, Mr. Nilsson. On 3 September, the SPO filed a request to amend the indictment pursuant to Rule 91B. The SPO presented three categories of amendments. The first category consisted of two detention sites located at Suhareka, Suvareka Municipality at or in connection with KLA members committed acts of persecution, imprisonment, arbitrary detention, other inhuman acts, cruel treatment, torture, murder, and enforced disappearance. The second category consisted of two incidents of persecution and murder committed in connection with the detention site in Gilian Gnigliane municipality and the modification of the time frame for the Gilian Gnigliane detention site. The third category consisted of two incidents of the accused personal participation in the crimes charged. On 23 December 2021, I issued a first decision on the SPO request in which I granted the SPO's motion to amend the indictment in relation to the third category of proposed amendment, which I considered not to constitute new charges. Further, I found that the first and second category of amendments were new charges and therefore must be assessed against the requisite evidentiary threshold of well-guarded suspicion as per Rule 86.4 of the rules, and in light of the evidence submitted as per Rule 86.3 of the rules. The parties were ordered to file their responses and replies on the question of whether the, porting, the supporting material to the amendments deemed to constitute new charges support a finding of well-guarded suspicion pursuant to Rule 86.4 of the rules. On 22 April 2022, I confirmed the first and second category of the charges against the accused con contained therein. I also ordered the SPO to submit by Friday 29 April 2022 an amended indictment with the first category and the second category of amendments. On 29 April 2022, the SPO filed its amended indictment, a lesser confidential redacted and public redacted versions of the first category evidentiary outline, and a confidential and a public redacted version of the second amended category evidentiary outlined. On 2nd May 2022, I scheduled these further appearances, and this is it for the procedural history. 
Now allow me to explain the specific purpose of this further appearance for the benefit of the public and those following us in the courtroom or online. Today's hearing is not a trial. No evidence will be presented or debated, and the guilt or innocence of the accused will not be discussed or decided. The purpose of this further appearance is regulated by Article 39 of the law and Rule 90 and 92 of the rules. According to these provisions, as pretrial judge, I shall have the new charges in the confirmed indictment read to the accused, confirm that the accused understands the new charges, satisfy myself that the rights of the accused, in particular his right to counsel, are respected, and inform the accused that within 30 days of today's hearing, he will be called upon to admit guilt or plead not guilty on each new charge set out in the confirmed amended indictment. If the accused wishes, uh, he may also immediately admit guilt or plead not guilty. I expect the parties to adhere to these matters, which I will address in turn. First, may I ask you, Mr. Selimi, to confirm that you have received the confirmed amended indictment dated 29 April 2022. Yes, Your Honor, I received the indictment and I read it in full. Me? I will now ask the court officer to read out the new charges contained in the confirmed amended indictment as foreseen in Article 39 of the law and Rule 92. Madam Court Officer, please. Thank you, Your Honor. One, in the amended confirmed indictment, the specialist prosecutor adds the following new charges against Mr. Recep Salimi. A. In relation to crimes alleged to have been committed in Budakove, Budakovo, and Semetište, Semetište in Suareke, Suareke municipality, between about 4 July 1998 and September 1998, and on or around 28 or 29 April 1999, involving at least 12 persons. Count one. The crime against humanity of persecution punishable under Article 13 1H of the law. Count 2. The crime against humanity of imprisonment punishable under Article 13 1E of the law. Count 3. The war crime of arbitrary detention punishable under Article 14 1C of the law. Count 4 the crime against humanity of uh, other inhumane acts punishable under Article 13 1J of the law. Count 5. The war crime of cruel treatment punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 6. The crime against humanity of torture punishable under Article 13 1F of the law. Count 7. The war crime of torture punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 8, the crime against humanity of murder punishable under Article 13 1A of the law. Count 9, the war crime of murder punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. And count 10, the crime against humanity of enforced disappearance of persons punishable under Article 13 1I of the law. B. In relation to crimes alleged to have been committed in Gilan Gnilane, in Gilan Gnilane municipality, also in July 1999, involving at least three persons. Count 1. The crime against humanity of persecution punishable under Article 13 1H of the law. Count 2. The crime against humanity of imprisonment punishable under Article 13 1E of the law. Count 3. The war crime of arbitrary detention punishable under Article 14 1C of the law. Count 4. 
the crime against humanity of other inhumane acts punishable under Article 13 1J of the law. Count 5. The war crime of cruel treatment punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 6. The crime against humanity of torture punishable under Article 13 1F of the law. Count 7. The war crime of torture punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. Count 8. The crime against humanity of murder punishable under Article 13 1A of the law. And count 9. The war crime of murder punishable under Article 14 1CI of the law. 2. The crimes under counts 1, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 were committed as part of a widespread or systematic attack directed against the civilian population in Kosovo and northern Albania from at least March 1998 through September 1999. In particular, these crimes targeted opponents who were perceived to have been collaborating or associating with Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, FRY forces, officials or state institutions, or otherwise not supporting the aims or means of the Kosovo Liberation Army, KLA, and later the Provisional Government of Kosovo, including persons associated with the Democratic League of Kosovo and persons of Serb, Roma, and other ethnicities. Three, the, crime, uh, the crimes under counts three, five, seven, and nine were committed against persons not taking active part in the hostilities and in the context of and associated with a non-international armed conflict in Kosovo between the KLA and forces of the FRY and the Republic of Serbia, including units of the Yugoslav Army, police, and other units of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, and other groups fighting on behalf of the FRY and Serbia from at least March 1998 to approximately 16 September 1999. Four, in relation to these crimes, there is a well-grounded suspicion that Mr. Selimi is criminally responsible pursuant to Article 16 1A of the Law 4. A. Committing, as a member of a joint criminal enterprise, the crimes under Counts 1 to 10, or alternatively, committing as a member of the aforementioned joint criminal enterprise, the crimes under count 1 to 10 by being aware that such crimes might be perpetrated in carrying out the common purpose of the joint criminal er enterprise and by willingly taking that risk. And or B, aiding and abetting the crimes under counts 1 to 10. Five, in addition and in the alternative, there is a well-grounded suspicion that Mr. Selimi is criminally responsible pursuant to Article 16 1C of the law as a superior for the crimes under Counts 1 to 10. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. Mr. Selimi, I wish to remind you that this is not the time to contest the new charges, but simply to acknowledge your understanding of the charges. You will have ample opportunity to challenge the charges with the assistance of your counsel. Mr. Selimi, did you understand the new charges contained in the confirmed indictment as read by the court officer? Of course, I read and I understood them. And I would like to confirm again that I have nothing to do with the crimes and the charges included in this indictment. Thank you, Mr. Selimi. Uh, Mr. Young, I see that you uh, request the floor. Is it? Your, it was simply to indicate that there is there has been some screen um, screen freezing for those that are here online. But um, I, there's no need to go back. Uh, I'm confident that Mr. Sleevey fully understands the allegations and he's made that clear. So I don't ask you or your um, assistant to repeat. I just wanted you to be aware there have been three short, short screen freezes. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Selimi. If you wish, it can be read again, of course. In any case, I will ask Madame Court Officer to make sure that the transcript of this hearing is transmitted or accessible to the Council so they can review everything that has been said today. But uh, Mr. Young, I'm happy to ask the Court Officer to proceed again if you, if you wish. No, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. This is noted. Uh, now, Mr. Selimi, let me recall you your right before this court. The law on the specialist chambers and the rules of procedure and evidence guarantee you a number of rights, and I will read out the most important ones. First, you shall be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. In the determination of the charges against you, you are entitled to a fair and public hearing subject to any measures ordered for the protection of victims and witnesses. You have the right to be informed promptly and in detail, in a language that you understand, of the nature and cause of the charges against you. You have the right to have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of your defense and to communicate with the counsel of your own choosing. You have the right to be tried within a reasonable time. You have the right to be tried in your presence and to defend yourself through your counsel. You have the right to have counsel assigned to you and without payment if you do not have sufficient means to pay for it. You have the right to examine or have examined the witnesses against you and to obtain the attendance and examination of witnesses on your behalf. You have the right to have the free assistance of an interpreter if you cannot understand or speak the language used in the court. You have the right not to be compelled to testify against yourself or to admit guilt. You have the right to remain silent and no adverse inference shall be drawn from your silence. You also have the right to make unsworn statements relevant to the case and you may appear at the witness under oath. You have the right to lodge preliminary motions. You have the right to receive the supporting material to the amended indictment submitted for confirmation. You have the right to receive all statements of witnesses whom the specialist prosecutor intends to call to testify at trial in the language that you understand and speak. You have the right to receive immediately any information which may reasonably suggest your innocence or mitigate your guilt or affect the credibility or reliability of the specialist prosecutor's evidence as soon as the information is in his custody, control, or actual knowledge. You have the right that all material and relevant evidence or facts in possession of the specialist prosecutor be made available to you before the beginning of and during the proceedings. This right is only subject to restrictions which are strictly necessary and when any counterbalancing protections are applied. You have the right not to be detained for an unreasonable period prior to the opening of the case, to request review of decisions on your detention, and to appeal such decisions directly before the Court of Appeal. You have the right to appeal either directly or through the certification process as provided for under the rules. Mr. Selimi, you've heard the most important rights that you enjoy in accordance with the applicable legal framework of the specialist chambers. Did you understand these rights? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Selimi. I wish to inform that according to Article 21.5 of the law, you may not represent yourself because you are currently in detention. Representation by specialist counsel is therefore mandatory. I take note that you are and you have been represented uh, since the beginning of the proceedings before the specialist chambers by counsel. And I am therefore satisfied that the accused is presently represented by counsel. I will now turn to the possibility for the accused to enter a plea, if any, in accordance with Rule 92. Mr. Selimi, within 30 days from today, you will be called upon to admit guilt 
or plead not guilty on each new charge of the confirmed indictment. If you wish to do so, you may also choose to immediately admit guilt or plead non guilty. I would therefore like to ask you, Mr. Selimi, if you have had the opportunity to discuss the charges in the confirmed indictment with your counsel, and if you are prepared to enter a plea at this time. In the Ruar Your Honor, allow me to plead not guilty to all the additional points in the indictment. Thank you, Mr. Selimi. This is noted. At this point, I would like to ask the parties whether they have any other issues they would like to raise. Mr. Prosecutor. No issues, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, the Council for Victim, please. No, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Ms. Bradjiskova. And now let me turn to the defense. Mr. Young, please. No, thank you. Not at this stage. Thank you, Mr. Young. So this concludes today's hearing. I thank the parties and participants, and I also thank the interpreters, stenographers, audiovisual technicians, and security personnel, as usual, for their assistance throughout the day. The hearing is adjourned. All right.